I have the pleasure of introducing Ashlyn Malouf Gashel. Ashlyn is the Deputy Director of Strategy and Program at the Othering Belonging Institute. She's a longtime organizer, a person who leads with spirit and a wonderful sense of joy. She's an all around badass, and I am honored and blessed to work with her. Ashlyn, come to the stage, sister. Again, my name is Ashlyn Malouf Gashow, Deputy Director at the Othering and Belonging Institute. And I'm just taking a moment to soak this in, this incredible sea of smiling and grounded faces. It's beautiful. I use she, they pronouns, a visual description of me. I'm Arab American with curly hair that doesn't quite reach my shoulders. I'm wearing a yellow jacket. There are prayer beads on my wrist that my mother gave me. And I probably have a somewhat goofy grin on my face because I still can't believe that I get to wake up every day and do this work. Let's... <clears throat> All right, let's get really, really loud, but let me finish why first. To express gratitude for each other, for being here, for taking the time. I know it's time away from home and from family and that's precious, so thank you for taking the time. To give a thank you to OBI staff who worked tirelessly to pull this conference together with care and with love. For our funders and sponsors who made it possible, for our volunteer coordinators and our love army of volunteers, as they refer to themselves, and probably most importantly, the staff in this building who have been honestly working day and night for us to be here with each other. Okay, so get loud. Well done. The Othering and Belonging Institute was formed in 2012 by John Powell, first under the name of the Haas Institute for a Fair and Inclusive Society. The Institute began at UC Berkeley with a group of scholars really committed to looking at marginalization and inclusion. This was in a number of different areas, disability studies, public health, LGBTQ citizenship, religious pluralism, and many others. And since 2012, the Institute has grown into a multidisciplinary approach of researchers, organizers, artists, and communicators. From our collective experience that spans communities, countries, and continents, we know that it is critical to center those who are most proximate to othering and who have experienced the most erasure from the global north. Our local problems, whether it's access to food, to clean water, to education, to living wage jobs, to activating civic participation, they all center back to this question of who belongs. There's no question that we have made impact and progress together in this room and many outside this room over the past 10 years. We've contributed to belonging through frameworks and strategies, research, field building. And while this is true, it is equally true that there remains an incredible amount at stake. As we are sitting here today, there are over 50 active wars. We are still in the midst of a global pandemic. We have overwhelming rates of loneliness, isolation, anxiety, and despair. There's a rise in right-wing authoritarianism globally And so we know this time together is precious, it's sacred, it's also really serious. We have serious work to do. This moment requires us to make bigger bets, have more tenacious aspirations, and come together for collective action and co-creation in ways that are unprecedented. So it's in this spirit 
that we are embarking on this monumental effort of making belonging a global norm within the next 15 years. Yeah, you can clap. Come on. You can clap. Okay, but let's be honest. What does that mean? Okay? Yes. So let's get clear on language. First, I want to define belonging, which includes recognition, inclusion, connection, and agency. And while belonging happens at many levels, the personal, the interpersonal, at the Institute, we're really focused on structures and systems that are impacting the conditions of people's lives. We know it's essential to belonging that all have a meaningful voice and the opportunity to participate in designing and making demands upon political, social, and the cultural structures that shape our lives. Okay, so what do we mean by norming? It's a set of values, principles, and behaviors that motivates actions, it shapes expectations, and affirms what is right or good. So let's simplify it a little bit, yeah? Okay. So when I say thank you, you say, thank you, thank you, why? Because it's a norm, right? It's what we have come to expect. It's what we believe is right or good or just to acknowledge a person who just did something for us. Does it happen every time? Do we always get told you're welcome? No. But it is what we expect to happen because it is a norm. Okay. So imagine a new world with me where inclusion, recognition, agency, and connection are what we come to expect from the systems and the structures that we interact with. What does that mean for education, banking, medical care, communal care, and the design of spaces? For an economy of belonging that prioritizes people over profit, where we practice co-governance, soulful leadership that shepherds the whole, where vulnerability and authenticity are rewarded, where we're in symbiotic relationship with the planet and all living things, where we hold rigor and expertise, but equally hold humility for all we do not know. To innovate and imagine new ways and to return to ancient ways that we were made to forget. Where no one is outside the circle of human concern, where we can hold difference without questioning someone's humanity, and even if somebody questions my humanity, it does not give me the right to question theirs. It's where we imagine a new baseline of human dignity and we structure a world designed for connection, arguably one of our most basic human needs. So this is the kind of world that we're seeking to create together and it is going to require a massive ecosystem. So over the course of the following days, you're going to hear different expressions of how people across the globe are doing exactly this. It will be both conceptual and practice-based. We will not cover everything. We hope to touch on a lot. We're going to learn from each other. We're going to co-create. And we're going to walk out of here ready to take further action together. So as Sarah already mentioned, please be sure to take care of yourselves to be aware of your needs, and equally, if not more important, take care of each other. You ready for it? Yeah? yeah? Okay. We are officially launched. <laughs>